what up so recently i made a video on you know how to use quickbooks api and do all those kind of auth authentication stuff and it was using some external libraries and people were confused how to do this refreshing thing and this video is exactly about that we will be you know looking into what is this auth concept and how we are going to refresh and all that so i've just created a boilerplate you know uh, just not to spend too much time coding along and you can find the github repository for this boilerplate in the description and i will be explaining step by step what you need to do so basically the idea is you know you have this auth token you generate an access token you generate a refresh token then you keep on using this refresh and access token uh, you know like uh, access token expires around 55 minutes or something just to ensure that you need to refresh it so that you can use that access token to make api calls in quickbooks okay in order to do that you need to store that in some kind of storage and using firestore you can use any kind of storage you want it uh, and then you have to schedule a function you know a trigger kind of thing which will trigger it again and again to renew your access token uh to be used for the next time okay uh so yeah let's get started and let's try to understand what exactly is happening so here i have just created this boilerplate uh, you can create one also like firebase in it and then you can you know specify that you want to use a function and all that uh, then accordingly you will see all those details so are you ready and you can proceed with that but because i've already created so i'll just cancel this out if you set up eslint i have set this up with typescript and eslint here i am using prettier which auto saves it so let's say if i do something like this and save it it will automatically you know uh, put uh, th these things in place or let's say i want to do it like this and if i save it it will auto format it so if you are using any kind of auto port formatter that might get conflicted with you know eslint js so you need to uh, update these rules and that's why i have done it here you can also use you must be uh, it, this process is similar to what we did in did in this api account explorer and then we are just it uh, so if i just select my you know app and then i get this client id then uh, you see this uh, client id is given to me on the right basically the default you know basic code is the client id and then the client id is given to me you can use any one of the this process is similar to that so i'll just Firebase and you should be able to fire, take it in Firebase functions console. Now again, one more important thing is that Firebase function logs. If you want to use Firebase functions, you must be on base manager on the you know, start and on the end.
this with a service account of decent price if you're deploying it. So this one is the same thing. We are doing this refreshing and everything. And so we are fetching this, we are doing the post method, then the response response comes, we are converting it to JSON. After once it is converted, we will get the response in this format. So if I go here, so here if you see, okay, it is refreshed token access token. We are destructuring it. Okay, that is weird. Let's quickly make an HTTP call to be sure. Let's check it. I have created one post method. Uh, so I'm passing basic and then I think this won't change application JSON, everything is fine body refresh token I need to update it with the latest one so let's copy and paste that one and paste it and try to send the request so as you can see here it's refresh underscore token for some reason they have done it like this but this doesn't make sense because we will be getting it in this form only so yeah we are destructuring accordingly refresh token and access token and if they are not undefined then we are returning it otherwise we are returning them as an empty string okay and in case of any kind of error we will do this invalid decoding token and all and then you know all kind of error handling sort of thing you can handle the error as the whatever way you want to, but this should be clear. Like, if there is any error, we are setting it invalid, decoding the token because this will come if the JSON decode doesn't work. This will happen when some wrong response comes from the API. Here. So let's go back and update our refresh token once again with the most latest one so that we don't miss out anything. Update. And now let's take this whole token as well and let's update our access token too okay we are good so after these two updates now i think we are all good so let me just save all these changes and then do a firebase deploy and i think before that just to you know in just to demonstrate how it is working let's do it for every two minutes and let's go to refresh token once we are done with this let's log a message uh, Refreshing token maybe and then once it is done successfully let's log another message just to see that how it's working so if we are in the else block here we are setting successfully fetched merge true and after that let's log another message refreshing token successful or let's make it more clear refreshed token successfully yeah so if I do these things and clear it out, do a deploy. This is a deploy command for this. You need to install Firebase CLI. In case if you see you no know, Firebase command found or something like that, you can just do very simply npm install g for global and then Firebase tools. And then you will see, you know, all the installations will take this. Again, for all these things, you need to have node installed. Uh, yeah, I think you must be familiar with all those stuff with this. In case if you're not, you can, you know, always Google and install like node for Windows you will get a MSI installer and it will do all the things for you. You don't need to do anything. And just click on this and then you're good. Okay. So coming back, so let's close this one. 
and so this ESLint I was talking about you will get these error in the stage itself if you have any ESLint errors and you can fix them accordingly like updating this file I've updated it like one of the things is that novar requires I've turned it to zero which means kind of off I've changed some other uh, plugins which were here like some Google plugins and all which were giving me errors and warnings so I've removed those things also so we are in the final stage let's wait for it to complete and once this is done then you should be able to you know get the access token and then after that you can do any kind of API request like literally anything because that is all you need to have so let's say create an invoice okay so we can just go to API references here if you see like let's say let's say simply just read an invoice so here you see this get v3 what is the endpoint you need to hit like this for the production for the sandbox you are having this UI and then you need to add this you need to make a get request and then you know you need to query it and here uh, everything will be same just that in the authorization you need to pass BRF and the auth token that we were talking about so if I show you here so here if you see we are doing this basic and this instead of this BRF and the authorization token that you get from the account and I'll show you by making one API call very soon so let's first see if everything is working fine okay deployment is successful so let's quickly jump to our firebase logs functions logs here we have only one so let me try to sort it out by time it's so we are getting this okay execution started and I think these are the older logs let's try to wait for the new ones as well these logs are sometimes delayed so this is like the log for the deployment and once the deployment is done within few minutes maybe we will get the logs so let's wait a little bit meanwhile we can uh, check for how you know you to use this access token to make other API calls so let me quickly open it and let's use one of the endpoints because we might not have any invoices right now so let's start with create an invoice so uh, the sandbox URL is this one so I'll just quickly copy paste this put in here and then we have some more things so v3 and I think they have auto-picked my real my d 416 let's confirm And by the way, you can use these endpoints as well with the same access token. So yeah, this one is the real ID. Just to be super sure, I'll just paste it here. And now let's see what else we need to do. Content type application JSON. We need to specify the headers. So content type will be application JSON. All right, this is done. Then we need to put an authorization token also. then the error and inside that okay we can see the logs to refresh token successfully so this was happened this was done at 319 I think we will see one more lag log at 321 and meanwhile that happens let's quickly before that happens let's quickly make one request so let's quickly go here and copy paste this guy paste it here so this will be our error authorization what else we need to do let's go here mm. this is request URL uh, request body uh, let's copy this body go to body raw json and I think let's send this and try to get the response okay we need to do a post method yeah we have got the response and if I do it uh, if I go to headers and let's do an accept and make it also application json and then send a request so we will get it in the json format as expected so again this is the common part which will be in the all the APIs and then you can do any kind of request you want to like whether it be creating an invoice getting any data any, anything will be possible with this okay so you just need to make sure this refreshing happens properly and if we go here again check the logs uh, I think we should have got a new refresh token by now okay refresh token successfully and if you go to again database and tokens and if we just check this timestamp so let's copy this and sorry go to console new date and then this so if you see it just happened this time so this is how you can track it all track all the data you can put in all the metadata and then accordingly you know use this now you must uh, you remember I added this realm ID because now I'm making request from postman I need to do the same thing from JavaScript or anything I can get realm ID handy you know with just getting when I'm trying to fetch all these kind of data points so that was all about this video let me know if you have any questions I hope this was helpful and this would have uh, uh, made you understand some of the basic things that are happening around QuickBooks API world you can go to any kind of endpoint you can do all these things you just need to have this authorization token that will help you you know that will you know enable you to access and make a request, update data, get data, create invoice, whatever endpoint they have provided here, all that can be done by this. <coughs>
finally if you have any doubts any questions you can always reach out to me uh, you can uh, ping me in the comments or you can go back and, and go to my page and you will find all the you know social media handles everything uh, by going to this link that's all i would uh, want to add in this video let me know if you have any questions and have a great day thank you very much